dedication. So, all right, I was telling you, we're going to talk to Anthony Hall, who's the founder of Rail. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing very okay, well. Everybody pay attention. It's Anthony's birthday. Here we go. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anthony. Happy birthday to you. And you look damn good. 425, but that's what happens when you do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, many, many happy returns of the day. And may I first, in case we don't get there, I want to say, uh, uh, express my admiration to you that you use your own life um, to make a difference in other people's lives and that you're so committed to it. I can't believe I, everywhere I turn, I see you activating. I see you fighting this battle and I think it's mm. amazing and I think we can do it with like a million more people like yourself because this is a huge war. Why am I telling you this? You know this. What are, what, what are some of the key things right now, some of the key concerns around addiction and recovering from addiction in your understanding? Well, thanks Holly and thank you to the taxi team for inviting us. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. One of the key things is that the family has been taken hostage by the addict. The addict is running our, our homes the mother and father are powerless. There's not enough help out there for people. The people that are meant to be fighting drug abuse are not combining as one. Mm. There's too many egos out there. So if we had to combine as one, when we get the desperate calls every day of the mothers, ek wil mek kan vrek maak, ek gaan mek kan vrek maak, it tears in you because you don't know what to do. Mm. There are places open. If we look at uh, places on the Cape Flats, people need, of the poorest of the poor, the mothers need money to get into a taxi, to go to a place for counselling. My thing is, we should start, and what we've been advocating for seven years, and, and thank you for the compliment, Solly, is that one man can't do this alone, but my life was saved, so my life's dedicated to this so we can make the difference, is to take back our streets. Mm. We wow. need to take back our streets, and it starts with your child is my child. It mm. starts with the children, it starts with the mother saying, I'm going to put in these boundaries, and come hello high water, I'm going to fix and stay with these boundaries. Mm. I'm not going to slowly relax the boundaries and relax the boundaries until such time that you actually come and the kid is sitting in the lounge and the mother is, t is behind a, a fence or a behind a, a, a maxi door or trailer door in her room mm. because they've actually become the prisoners in their own home. Yeah. Our kids are looking up to gangsters as role models. There are so ro many role models around this country that our kids should be looking up to, but they're looking up to the, the gangsters and they've seen the cars and they've seen the, the money that drips from them and they've seen the women that hang around them. So they're not actually looking at the bigger picture. You know, at the moment we'll be busy doing the colleges here in Cape Town and the respect and discipline is gone. We're losing a generation and, you know, the, sitting and, and, and listening to the show and, and, and having a, a laugh with you guys, it's almost that our, our children have been taught the metric system through drugs. It's a gram this, it's a quarter this, it's a kilogram this. And where do we stop it? We can't blame government. We can't expect government to come into our homes and run our homes. It's for us as the parents to take the home. Now it's difficult with a single mother. It is mm. extremely oh, it's a, it's difficult. such a cr crucial thing. Uh, we're, we're in our own experience, we know somebody who just her life has just been a nightmare. Literally, there is no other way to put it. She has dogs to protect herself from her own son. She locks herself up for her own safety. She has to lock up everything in her home. Uh, she takes him to the police. It's pretty much... Oh, she, she's on her own. That's what she literally says. I've been let down by everybody and I feel like I'm in this on my own. What, what is your message to the single parent, to the single mother like that? You know, to the single mother, they virtually are on their own, unfortunately. You know, we're not crying out for resources, we're crying out for the human empathy towards people. Every place in Cape Town should have a place where mothers can go and meet, not making an appointment for a week or two's time yeah. to say, come and see me in two weeks' time, because that mother needs that help then. then and if the more mothers know that there's a place that they can come to without making money, what price do we put on a life? When a celebrity dies, it goes front page of the newspapers. It really? gets splashed all over everywhere. But when our children die, it's nothing. It's just another it. True. It's a niemand that, that dies. Really true. We see with the case of Arlene, the niemand that died, that is someone's child. So 
how, how then, Anthony, how do we activate? How do we then get on into this process where we're saying, okay, here we're starting something, here is a haven for mothers, here is a place for women to, to get away from their abusive husbands who are addicted to turquoise. That's also a reality that we face um, here. How do we start that process? What, what is required? What needs to happen? I think we need strong leadership from civil society. I think a very good place to start is the church, is the mosque, for mm. people that are leaders to open up their churches, open up their mosques and say, here we go, here's a safe place, here's a sanctuary. Use the, the, the places out there that, that offer help, the, the, the places for abused women, for, for, for women that you quite rightly say, there are so many children today that are drugging with their parents. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. There are so many children out there that they're drugging with their parents, so there's no role model there in the home. So we need to open up these places, and it needs to be opened up for free. And then people with civil society who have seen their son or their daughter go through addiction and come out the other side and today, by God's grace, are clean, need to take the lead. They need to pay back to society. I like they that. They have to Of course, they back. also have an idea of what that journey is. Yeah. Because they've been there, and, and once you've been down that road, you can come back and you can give back because your life has been, your life has been spared. Mm. And I think it comes down to the grassroots level. Let's, let's be each other's keeper. You, my brother, because this thing doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're colored, if you're rich, or if you're poor. It doesn't discriminate. And then there's obviously all groups out there for people to, to get help. You know, for, there's Alcoholics Anonymous. There's the al side of it. The rail meetings run every Thursday. It's for the parents. But the different dynamics of, of taking people out of when we go to a farm. You guys speak to those people on the farm. They feel abandoned. They feel lost. And what do they do then? They, they pick up alcohol to numb themselves. So it's a vicious, vicious circle that we're living in. So strong civic leadership. Speak out priests, provide spaces, imams. We're talking teachers, principals. Teachers, principals. Societies. Vitals at school. Yeah. We've been advocating for the last seven years is to bring compulsory drug education into schools. We need to prevent, we need to educate, educate, mm. educate. And it's the same thing, Solly and team, it's that starfish scenario we're talking about now. Mm. We can make the difference to the one and we can make a difference to the hundreds. And if we all band together, role models, people need to start looking up to people. If, if, if Solly Folander, people can look up to Solly Folander and people do look up to Solly Folander. And I've known, Solid form for many years. Those are the kind of role models that we want. But at the moment, they're looking up to the gangsters because the gangsters are feeding them their brain. The drug dealer is giving you your first hit or your first heroin quarter. He's giving it for free because once he's got you, he's got you. And then comes the robbing of the mother, the robbing of the father, leads to crime, leads to HIV. I would imagine the sense for the youngster is that if the parent is turning a blind eye, if the parent is behaving like there's nothing wrong, if the parent is like, I'm not seeing that, well, at least the gang's paying attention. They're paying attention to what mm. you're doing. They're saying, hey, brother, what's going on? What are you doing? It's time for parents to stay involved in their children's lives, isn't it? I mean, I don't want to blame people, but it does feel to me, and I, I hear your point loud and clear, within your own home, that is where you need to start enforcing some rules. Absolutely. If there's no consequences, or if there were no consequences to my drugging or drinking, I wouldn't have stopped. Yeah. So in the home, we have to say, this is where it so goes. So question from now, oh, where is he? Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gentlemen with you, um, who are they? Well, we've got Moto on the, on the far right. Hey, Moto. And we've we got Aziz, and we've got Brandon. Hey, Aziz, hey, Brandon. And they're recovering addicts. They're on that farm that, that we've got in Rawsonville. This is in Worcester. Yeah, That's Rawsonville. correct. Rawsonville, yeah. Worcester. Um, how, sorry, just before I inter oh, let me interrupt you quickly. How do people get onto that? Some people are watching now saying a farm. It sounds like you know what you're talking about. Uh, how does intake work at Rail? Intake at works. We, we pride ourselves on this. There is an admission fee, but those people who cannot afford do come in there. Okay. We allow them in there. We sponsor the people because it doesn't go about making money anymore. It doesn't go about, I want to make money out of someone else's pain. Yeah. It can't be like that. And we pride ourselves on that. We try and do everything because we have to show them the difference. If you want to see change, I must show a person change. Yeah. So when people come in, we want to empower them to get a driver's license, get a bank card, get an ID book, teach them and reteach them the values that their mothers and fathers did teach them that they forgot that the dragging took away. It took away our self-respect. I remember when I was on the park bench, when I, from being a drug squad detective to a murder and robbery unit detective, 
never thinking that I would end up in Paul's Mall prison and never thinking that I'd be a homeless man on the park bench. By grace, I'm there today, but it's taken hard work and it's taken long work and it's taken people that have helped me on that journey. And these young boys, I call them boys, that's the affection part of it. You know, there's other guys on the farm that are really trying to change their lives. And it's so important. It's if I can ask you, gentlemen, if you have a quick thought for the young people out there who might be at this moment struggling with that choice about, uh, you know, do I join a gang? Do I, I am struggling with addiction. What do I do? What would your message be to them? I'd just say, don't even think of picking up the first drug because it's going to lead you down a road that you don't want to go down. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. And what, what I can say is, um, like to, to, to youngsters out there who even think of like, of like picking up the first drug and and it's it's not, it's not worth it. At at the end at the end, end of the day, you you're gonna lose that that battle. That's not a battle. You can win. No, um, nothing good can actually come out of using drugs. And mm. it's, it's it's a bad road. It's, there's mm. no good. To it. Mm, okay, from my side, I would like to say they mustn't even pick up the drug because drugs kill. And I think that's a key point that one needs to make because there's also that sense out there that youngsters think that you you like. You, you know, you're invulnerable and, and, and you don't even want to start. It's not even, it's about saying don't even yeah. try the thing. In the beginning when, when we were dragging and drinking, and I talk for myself now, it was fun. It was good fun. While it lasted. While it lasted. And then you go across the invisible line and once you've gone across that invisible line, that's it. Yeah. Okay, we're running out of time and I want to say this. Uh, uh, Rail, um, uh, you get hold of them, 082 7747. We'll put all those details on our Taxi Vision page. We encourage you to get hold of I think Anthony and his gang have a clear understanding of what the complexities are around this issue. If you're a single parent struggling with it, if you're parents struggling with this, if you're struggling with a partner, with a child, with a family, member, get hold of them, connect with them. Because uh, I think that's the key point also. Engage. Don't, Engage. Yeah. Come out of the closet. We've heard it so much. Come sure. out of the closet. Yeah. Not you, Mr. Mr. Gavala. Not you. Yeah. The biggest thing, if I could get one message across in the show. Let's remove the stigma around drug addiction. We're not bad people, we're sick people. Like Let's it. remove yeah. the stigma. Like That's our thought for this the show. Uh, on our next show, we talked to a representative from Metro Rail about what's happening with our train. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a lekker week. Bye. <laughs>